everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Diane and I hope you're all well. Today we're going to be painting a lemon tree in a pot. So let's get started. This is my preliminary sketch, which I've just been working on to choose my uh, colours. And um, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be using my um, ga little gallo set, which is um, Italian handmade paints. and. Um, there's some lovely colours here, they're really bright, but the thing that strikes me most of all is how beautiful the yellow is. And for lemons, this is lemon yellow and it couldn't be more appropriate. It's actually a stronger colour than my usual paints that I've had before. So um, I'm going to try that out and I'm going to do the greens a little bit softer than they are in reality. And I'm going to use some sap green with that lemon yellow and also this green here, which is uh, deep sea green which also can mix well with the yellow. But if you don't have the gallo paints, don't worry. Any set of paints will include lemon yellow, that's fine. Most of you will have sap green or Windsor green, and that's also fine for the leaves. Um, if you've got a brown like burnt umber or um, burnt sienna or any kind of brown, you can then also use that to make the, um, the branches. It doesn't matter what color brown it is. So that's my rough sketch, but I'm not going to be doing it like that, not in that format anyway. I have, um, I'm going to put it, like I said, in a pot. I was just practicing the flowers because um, lemon trees in a warm climate can have flowers as well as green and yellow lemons on them all at the same time, which makes them quite an interesting subject, doesn't it? Um, and this is basically what I'm going to be sketching now. The idea being a little pot, which I think we'll probably do in blue, blue and white, because that's a nice contrast with the yellow and the green. You could make it any colour you like. Terracotta is also nice, or pink. Let's we'll see how it goes. But I'll start off by drawing the, um, the tree itself. And the leaves are really pretty much an oval shape like that. And they have um, a vein down the middle, and then they have more veins like this. And it's up to you really whether or not you put all of those veins or any of those veins in, depending on the style. And some lemons have a slightly serrated edge to the leaf as well. So you might or you might not, I probably won't want to put that in. And uh, they're all going to be different sizes on here, so you can just play around with that. And obviously they grow on a little stalk, which is attached to a little stem. Um, and I think they probably grow in pairs. You might want to draw some of them sideways on, a little bit like that, folded over kind of thing, because they tend to do that. And a lot of them will just be very simply done like that. The flowers have a little centerpiece like this, and then a few dots in the middle, and they have five petals like that, which are white. And to, to draw white petals is tricky, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw them in pencil and then I'll paint negatively around the petals in whatever colour seems appropriate at the time. On the one I was doing this morning as a practice, I had some violet, so I was just going behind it with the violet to make it stand out a little bit. So, so that's that. And the tree itself, in, when you get them in pots, as you, as you probably know, I expect those of you who live in warm climates have all had these trees, they tend to have quite small stems. So a lot of leaf and a lot of fruit, but they have fairly um, uh, lightweight sort of trunks. So that's roughly where we're headed. So here's my sketch. I'm going to try and reproduce it onto the sheet of paper here which is 
a um, sheet of, this is Bockingford, uh, 140 pounds watercolour paper, 100% cellulose, so it's a nice sturdy paper that, that isn't too demanding and uh, takes correction well and stands up to a bit of abuse if you need to be abusive. Sorry about the shaking. Um, anyway, so I'm going to more or less uh, put it in the middle of this piece of paper and I was thinking about how's the best way to go about drawing this um, tree, this little tree, and would I do the pot first and then grow the tree out of it or would I do the tree first and then put the pot on afterwards? And um, so, so yeah, yeah, so anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark the top and the bottom. So let's say that the, the pot's going to want to come down to about here. So this, this would be either the ground or a table, depending on um, what it was standing on. And then I'm thinking about the proportions just roughly. So maybe the pot might stop there roughly, maybe I quite like the way a lot of the time people draw them with quite long um, stems and quite long branches, quite slim as well, like that. And then I think, generally speaking, they, they tend to have just a couple of um, branches coming out from there. I think that's more or less how they're done. But I was thinking maybe it would be a good idea to put the lemons in first. Um, and I'm not sure, but uh, I think it possibly is a good idea to just draw the lemons in first and then put the leaves in. And the reason why is because you want them to be um, the main uh, part of the painting. And if you, I, with my sketch here, I didn't put them in all at once to start with. I put them in um, as I, as I <coughs> excuse me, as I went along. And um, this way, if you do do it this way, um, you can sort of balance them and make sure that you get them um, evenly distributed. Yeah, it's actually quite hard to talk and draw at the same time. I have said this before, I know. Um, yeah, evenly distributed. So some of them are gonna be bigger, some of them are gonna be smaller, and then try and vary the angles and so on. And uh, so just put the, they, they all have this little kind of knobbly thing at the end, don't they? And um, make a nice design and they can kind of overlap or almost overlap. And uh, then after we've done lots of lemons, it's gonna be one of those really prolific lemon trees, then we can start to put a few flowers in, a few lemon flowers. And as I think I said before, um, nice thing about lemon trees is, and and other citrus as well, is that they often have flowers and fruit, both ripe and green, at the same time. So we'll paint one or two of these lemons with a greeny tinge, and some of them will make more orange in colour. And. Uh, so I'm just popping in some flowers here. They have five petals, these little white flowers. And uh, <clears throat> so we would imagine that the branches would be coming up like this, going through the lemons and the flowers. We don't need to make a big deal of those though. I'll put another lemon in here in the background. And um, Maybe we'll start putting in some leaves and they're oval shaped, like we said. And some of them are gonna go behind the lemons. And they probably should vary in size as well. I don't like the shape of that lemon. Looks a bit lost there too, doesn't it? easier to make the white of the flower stand out. That's a leaf. You can tell which ones are the leaves because you're going to put um, a vein down the middle, aren't you? Uh, put 
and all the leaves here, perhaps. And perhaps one here. And then perhaps if we were to bring the branch up that way. And what you want to aim for, isn't it, is a nice sort of roundish kind of shape. Not too regular, something like that. That would probably do, maybe another leaf there. And when you come to paint it, you can obviously adjust, but we've got one, two, three, four. Maybe we'll put another lemon here. Perhaps a slightly smaller one. Yeah, when you come to paint it, you can always add a few more if you want. So leave it like that, and that's the stem. And then, very tricky, what kind of, I've been pondering this, I think I'm going to do blue and white bars. But it's going to be very simple. I'm not going to put a lot of detail into it, but I think I will make it blue and white, so something like that, with a little bit of dirt in there. Okay, so there we are. That will do as a starting point. Let's hope that works out. Um, now the paint, I um, am using my Gallo uh, set here, but I don't like to work from the actual tin. I like to move the paint into a um, palette. So I'm picking up some yellow now, and I'm going to pop that in. This is very, very, very intense paint. It's very good. And uh, I will need some sap green as well. I haven't got sap green in my gallo set, so I'm going to just squeeze a little bit of that out. Um, and then I need uh, orange for the shadows of some of the lemons. This is uh, called Hokkaido orange, is it? Yeah. And what else? Well, we'll probably need a little bit of lilac and a little bit of blue. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I think it would probably be a good idea to put a bit of purple in there. So that's quinacridone violet, that one. Okay, I'll put that here for a minute. The little swatch cards are really useful, so just in case you forget what's where. Um, what brush am I going to use today? I think I will use my Drawwell Maestro number eight. Any round number eight would do. And I'm going to start, I'm going to plunge in with the yellow for the lemons. Now this is lemon yellow, this colour, and it's very strong. Very bright yellow, which I think does a good job of depicting the lemons. And um, then for the shadow areas, you're going to probably want to use orange. So if you just drop a bit of orange in around and about and let that spread a bit. Um, I'm always a little bit wary about shadows on yellow because it can make it can look dirty very quickly so I wouldn't use any green or blue unless 
I was painting a lemon that was going to be on the green side, so one that's not very ripe, in which case I would probably be inclined to just drop in a bit of green like that. So it's kind of contrasty there. So rather than wasting the paint, I'm kind of doing two or three all together and then coming in with the orange when my brush has more or less run out. Just drop in some shadow. Keep varying them a little bit. Maybe lift out a bit of colour in the centre where the lights are so that the Shadow shows up more. And top up my yellow reserve there. And when you get sort of to this point, you need to stop a second and have a look and say to yourself, is my balance of yellow fruit right? And you could say, well, maybe I should have another one over here. It's peeping out from behind. Like that. And of course, mustn't forget the, the shadow side. Hmm, sounds like Jung. The shadow side. Yes. Um, shall I put another one up here? peeping out from behind maybe, a little bit greenish, make a nice contrast. With that yellow one. And maybe one more yellow one here. Okay, so that's, that's that. And then um, I think probably the next thing to do is going to be the leaves. So I'm using sap green here as the basis for the leaves and I'm going to be mixing it with some yellow to make um, more yellowy greens, so like that. And then also I'm going to pick up a little bit of um, blue, this is ultramarine or cobalt would do, and then we'll mix up a slightly more bluish green. So we've got the straightforward green and then a yellowish green and we can vary the colours of the leaves by using those three shades. So you, you might want to come in first with a, a yellowy green. And you can add a little bit of another colour and then perhaps On reflection, that probably wasn't a very good choice of uh, the 
colour for that lemon there, you should make that a little bit less green, a bit more yellow. <clears throat> so many different ways you can do this. The leaf painting, you can do it in a sort of two-stroke way like that. Or you can use more strokes like that. I suppose it depends where you're putting the leaf. You can do one colour and then add another colour for shadow, which will blend and bleed and meld and so on. The main thing is to vary the colours. Vary the greens, don't do them all the same colour. And then it will look more natural. I can't remember who it was who said it to, to me, or I think it might have been Hugh Brading, but I can't remember, I think it was actually, but it might have been somebody more famous than that, I just don't remember. But I do remember what he said, and that was, don't paint the same colour twice. It might have been um, Ron Ranson. I can't remember, but it's what was meant by that was, every time you go back to pick up more paint, make sure you pick up a different colour from the one that you had on your brush before. Just alter it a little bit by adding something. Okay, I think I've painted most of those leaves for now. I will be coming back and adding more, um, but I'm going to now pick up a little bit of uh, lilac and mix some blue with it to give me a very light shade of lilac. And then I'm going to put some shadows in for these flowers, sort of in the center just to show that they exist. And then they have also got little orangey yellow centers. We'll make them sort of orange. Because that will contrast better. And then Um, we need some something on the brown side, so if I go for the orange and mix it with some purple, we'll have a brownish orange colour. So we'll just paint in. Doing a, a lot of whoops, not doing a lot of um, branch work there, but then a bit of shadow down the side there, which I've mixed a little bit more purple in, just to give a little bit of a little bit more shape to that round branch there, and uh, we need. I 
said I was going to do this with a blue design on it, didn't I? So. Could have a sort of blue rim and then I don't know, kind of random sort of blue roses. And then we'll need a little bit of shadow underneath. And I'm going to let that dry, then I'm going to come back to stage two of the flowers. I mean the leaves and the lemons. I'm picking up a little bit of slightly darker green and I'm going to put some shadow on the vein area of most of these leaves so that they have a little bit of shape. This is kind of dry now. And if you want to, you can also use a shadow colour to put, make half of the leaf slightly darker than the other half because it looks a bit more convincing. And I'm, I'm painting green in behind the flowers as well, so they stand out, so I'm just using a very light green. where there would be either shadow or leaves. But you wouldn't necessarily see the shape of the leaf. And then we'll do it down here a little bit too. Uh, and maybe a little bit behind here. And maybe this needs another leaf or two there, very pale. And I'm going to see whether I can correct what I now I'm considering to be a couple of mistakes, because I think that's too blue for this painting, the way the painting has developed, so. I'm going to try and lift some of that out. And this is where um, a good quality paper allows you to make a correction. And there's nothing wrong with making corrections. And I don't like this bit either, which I came too strongly with the violet. So, and this one here is also too dark. So that makes it easier. Look all of that out. And I think it's useful for you to see that, you know, I'm no different from anybody else who paints and all the other teachers on here are also the same and they wouldn't deny it. You make a judgment, it turns out to be not quite what you wanted, so you have to correct it, so correct it, you know. This one here is also too dark. And the reason why these things are the way they are, you have a choice, you either have to bring the rest of it up to match or else you knock those back. And I've decided to knock this back. And then it more or less disappears. The problem is solved. Okay, so then thinking also about the um, the pot, 
it needs a little bit of shadow on one side, like that. Maybe a little bit more along the oh, I think that might be a bit green. Uh, orange. A little bit of orange on here because this one seems to have missed out. I think I didn't. And then you can, if you want, you can come in again. Now these are more or less dry and you can put a bit more shadow in, for example, around the little knobbly bit there. That You could do a lot more. Um, we could have a little bit more shape on the flowers as well. Come in with a bit more blue. We could do that, but we don't want to lose the white. But it's surprising actually how much difference just a couple of uh, extra bits of blue will make. And um, if you feel that the color of the, um, the what do you call it, the Trunk. Is it a trunk? It seems a bit small to be called a trunk. Isn't quite right, then you can darken it down. Maybe this might want a bit of blue in it to make that a little bit darker. What I'm feeling now is that I need to leave that, go and have lunch, come back and see whether I want to do anything else to it once it's completely dry. So there's the final painting. Um, don't forget to uh, go to dianeanton.com, download any sketches you want, uh, all free of charge for all the paintings that we've done over the last year. There is another lemon painting as well, which is just a branch of lemons, which you might find interesting. I think it goes into a bit more depth about the structure of the lemon. Um, so there's that. And otherwise, if you did enjoy this, please give me a like and subscribe, turn on notifications and leave any questions and comments you have in the comments section below. So I wish you a happy end to your day today and see you again soon. So bye bye for now, everybody. Bye bye.